Hi Gemini, welcome to your end of January 2017. It's Raina here. So, oh yes, I have to tell you about something. So, on the 27th of January, <laughs> just trying to get everything straight in my mind, um, we're going to have a new moon in Aquarius at 8 degrees of Aquarius. Now, as an air sign, um, Aquarius forms a trine with Gemini. So this will be in your ninth house of higher education, philosophical framework, and other religious pursuits, foreign travel. So all of those things could be featured in new beginnings in that area. So I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. And any foreign people that maybe are, you know, in your life now, maybe they will be featured too, or you'll meet somebody who's from a foreign country. That would make even more sense. Putting in my plug here. Okay, ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. Oh, which one? I guess I'll pick both of them. <laughs> my card, my soulmate card. All right. So a lot of earth element came out so that might be um, you know career matters that you're dealing with and also it can be about earth sign individuals who are in your life for some reason I always just talk about romantic partners but I shouldn't because it could be anybody it could be a friend that you haven't seen for a long time it could be anybody um, the earth signs are Taurus Virgo Capricorn but the people themselves may not be those actual sun signs. They may have them as a rising sign. So they may give off more of an image of being an earth sign, even if they're a fire sign or a water sign or what have you, or an air sign like you. Some of you may have a lot of earth in your chart too. So that, you know, one thing doesn't uh, preclude the other. So um, anyhow, let's see. Let's start off. Well, this is the centerpiece. Now, this could also be a Leo. That's the astrological sign it connects to. But definitely something is giving you a sense. It's, you know, obviously it's self-explanatory. We talk about strength. But it's not just in the outer sense of presenting yourself as somebody who is confident, but feeling uh, that way inside for some reason. And I feel that some of you may actually have come out of a relationship in recent months and, you know, you didn't know that you could stand on your own two feet because I do get in the, in the uh, past position, I get the nine of pentacles. So that's a card of somebody who is um, self-sufficient. And so with the, the current strength, it's, it's showing a growing confidence if we talk about um, people, we can talk about earth signs and now fire sign individual. Also in, in business, a feeling of being able to take care of yourself. So it might be leaving a corporation uh, where you might have even felt like you were kind of uh, in a uh, crib, <laughs> uh, where you were just kind of you might have been paid very well, but you didn't feel like you were accomplishing what you wanted to accomplish, and it was just about the money. And, and you realize that you had the resources to go it alone, and you're starting to feel a lot better. It may have been a toxic environment for some people, and that was eroding your self-esteem, and now you're starting to regain it. So um, the energy coming up in the... In the next two weeks, 
I did decide to pick both of these cards, and it's kind of funny because both of them go along with one another. The Knight of Pentacles is about working very hard um, towards amassing financial security, and the Four of Pentacles is about managing your money very well. So you may be budgeting, but not because you're fearful, but because there's something, you have a goal in mind that you want to accomplish, and the, the way to do that is through being, you know, wise with your money. This could deal with somebody that has come in. Um, maybe, you know, for some people there was a, um, an earth sign individual who you were separated from. Maybe they were um, in the military. They, they, they were gone for a while. You had to be strong while they were gone, and now they're back, and now they're working very hard. Um, and so you are able to, because they want to build a life. Uh, the, the number four is a number of foundations. So there's that sense of wanting to um, create some kind of, um, you know, future based on um, a very strong base. And it's, it's going to be a very practical kind of a thing because it's connected to elements of the earth and their properties and their objects like houses, you know, land, actual money, um, resources, in other words. And sometimes the, peop the person that you're connected to works in a banking institution um, where they are dealing with other people's resources as well, um, and they're very good at it, but they could work in, they could be an accountant, it could be one of those kinds of jobs as well. Or you're doing that type of work, where you're handling money, dealing with money. Um, I think that for some of you, you're actually working for yourself though. And the Knight of Pentacles is just you like rolling up your sleeves and getting down to work and doing what you need to do because you may have a lot to do. Maybe you just launch something. And um, it's requiring of you that you spend a lot of time doing that stuff. Now, the higher message. So this is kind of like a, I was going to say a warning from the universe, but that sounds too dire. It could be something positive or negative. In this case, it's the Seven of Wands. It's like you're being asked or you're feeling like you're on the defensive for some reason. Um, you know, it, sometimes I feel like if you are starting your own thing, there could be people around you that are kind of not downgrading it, you know, overtly, but they could be kind of trying to poke holes in your plans or your actual um goals they may be trying to you know because the, the the wands relate to your your goals too your ambition and when you're defensive about them other people may be it's like you see the person is fending off attack so there could be some debbie downers out there who are saying oh you know well do you really think it's going to work and all this stuff because a lot of times people will do that when you're going after your goal, your dreams, and they are still in the matrix and they're still allowing other people to tell them what to do. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, working for somebody else as long as you really like what you're doing, you feel invested in it. I feel like some of you may have not been that way. And, um, you know, it's interesting because Gemini is a sign that can be very easily distracted and also um, easily bored. So you need the kind of environment that you can have change, a lot of change. Um, this type of energy is like very uncharacteristic of you because you tend to be a very, um, I, I don't want to say fly by night because that sounds like you're just uh, totally flaky, but you do tend to be rather like a dabbler. You like to do this, you like to do that, and that's because you lose interest and you go on to new things. And sometimes it's like the jack of all trades, master of none. 
Although I was just thinking about it when I was thinking about the Knight of Pentacles and how steady he is. I was thinking, okay, well, what could that represent? Well, your second house of earned income is actually Cancer. So this is a very good house for saving. Um, and, you know, truth be told, Gemini is not the most generous sign of the Zodiac. Um, they tend not to... I was going to say they're pretty damn cheap, but I, you know, that's obviously a, uh, you know, broad brush. But Gemini, um, except for Libra, the other two air signs tend to be a little bit less, um, maybe because they both are followed by water signs that tend to be very retentive. You know, Aquarius is followed by Pisces and you're followed by Cancer. And uh, there are more can Cancerian billionaires than any other sign, supposedly. So the sign of cancer to have an, as your second house can indicate you can amass great wealth. Donald Trump is a, is a Gemini. And so you can amass great wealth, but the thing is you have to be really connected with what you're doing more than some other signs. Like if you were a Taurus, you might be such a mercenary uh, materialist that you would do just about anything to, to make a buck. Um, you know, you're not like that. So you may be feeling that some people are trying to um, kind of diss you or maybe it's just you want to prove your, your stuff because you're a newbie or something like that. Uh, some people may be working at a new job. Maybe you're working for somebody else and you feel like you have to prove your metal, and it's actually I think it I think it's M E D D L E. I always think it should be like metal, M E T A L. Um, so anyway, it, it actually it's probably I think it's like M E T T L E. So <laughs> like not like meddling, um, but you would as a Gemini you 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 like words so. I'm not going to seem too random and off tangent, um, on a tangent actually. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, it could be in personal relationships that somebody is making you feel, I, I shouldn't say making you feel, that you feel defensive about something regarding a relationship. And if anybody is, is, is triggering you, for lack of a better term, or you feel triggered by somebody, First, get to your safe space. No, um, actually, you know, that means that you need to question the relationship because it could be that this is a toxic influence. I, I mean, yeah, this is just my opinion, but I just feel like, you know, when you constantly feel on the defensive, whether it's with a friendship or um, a love relationship or um, any kind of relationship, if you're always having to explain yourself and you know, you always feel like you're, the other person doesn't get you. To me, that's a game. It's like they're trying to keep you off kilter so that you never feel really good about yourself because that's how they can control you. So you have to, you know, as, as an air sign, you have to kind of be able to get, get into other people's minds. If they're going to get into your minds, you have to be able to get into their minds to understand these things, these ploys. Because um, that's a classic one to make. Uh, another one is when people accuse you of, of something you didn't do, like cheating. That's a way that they get you on the defensive. Because then, um, when you once you're defending yourself, it's almost like you're guilty anyway. So it's a way to weaken the the opponent, and uh, it's it's not cool. You know, it really isn't. So just uh, a word to the wise: what crosses you? The Wheel of Fortune. Okay, well, um, now that person may be a Sagittarius. This is connected to the, the planet Jupiter, which is the ruler of Sagittarius. So that may be the your nemesis. <laughs> and again, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It could be a friendship that's got, gone toxic. Um, it could be, too, that you're out of alignment, that you're not connected to for some reason. And it could be if you've had any kind of like, um, you know, breakup or losing a job in the recent past that kind of knocked you off your game, 
you may be recovering, but you're not in total alignment and that's keeping you. And some of that may be your thoughts. Okay. Um, I've said this before. I believe that Gemini is one of the, the more high strung individuals of the Zodiac. And so there tends to be a lot of, um, you know, free, there can be like free floating anxiety, you know, like because you're ruled by Mercury, same with Virgo, because I have a moon in Virgo and I understand this. I've been, you know, <laughs> high strung my whole life where you just feel on edge. Maybe a lot of times it's hard to relax. It's hard to, you know, sometimes there can be ADD issues, very uh, distractible, hard to focus. Um, if, in more extreme cases, there can be racing thoughts and meditation is very helpful for that, especially if you've been through some stressful situations and you're trying to get back into alignment where you feel like everything is flowing more easily, then definitely look into some of those kind of things. Um, restorative yoga is really good. I like that. And you, you know, it gets your, it also, you know, on a, I was going to say on a physiological level, it's good, but also the chakra system, you know, you kind of, any kind of blockages that can be kind of rectified by doing different asanas and, and things like that. So just a, a tip and um, the advice is the um, six of cups, the card that I'm always getting. The more that I think about this, the more I'm thinking that we are supposed to, if we're confused about our life path, always think back to when you were a child, the things that you love to do, that you did without even thinking twice about it, that you came into this lifetime with a gift to do, because that is your path. That is your Dharma. And when I do the, my like, you know, like, let's just say like a career reading or a natal path reading, something along those lines, I look at the North Node. I look at the Sun and compare the North Node and the Sun and see if there's any kind of a consistency because that can oftentimes give hints if you're confused about your life purpose, I should say. Um, but a lot of us, we kind of sort of know what we, or maybe we totally know what we want to do, but we don't think we can make a go of it. And that's where we get hung up. And this card is saying that, you know, things that are true are not complicated. Things that are good are not complicated. Uh, and I, 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 that's what I take from this card, is that good things in life are simple. And also like simple living in general. Do you have a lot of bills every month that you're working a job you hate to pay? And that could be something as simple as uh, f smartphone and cable, you know, spending hundreds of dollars a month on something when you could get a net 10 phone like I have and no cable and just make do. Remember that um, phrase? Because then you have a sense of freedom. And that's what uh, Gemini's love is a sense of freedom, not, uh, not complication, uh, uh, complications in your life. Um, so just things that you can think to make your life a lot easier. This could also point to soulmate connections in love relationships. Obviously, you know, this is a two week um, period. This is also a general reading. So to suggest that all of these events are happening uh, in the next you know, 14 days is a bit silly. On the other hand, they could be themes that you're already working with, dealing with right now, and they could just be kind of giving you that, uh, you know, thumbs up from the universe saying, yes, you're on the right path with some of your beliefs, okay? And then the uh, outcome is the Queen of Swords. And this is, you know, your element, the Swords, Rash, uh, rational thought, um, you know, the emotions being under control, um, the intellect, the power of the intellect. But what's nice about the Queen of Swords versus the King of Swords is that there is that feminine principle within it so that it's not just pure, uh, you know, um, intellect, which with the King of Swords can be out of touch with your feelings and that can even create a sense of coldness um you know not really being aware of what's happening 
and appreciating what is supposed to be occurring, you know, in terms of, especially in dealings with other people, appreciating um, their feelings. You know, the King of Swords can be very remote. The Queen of Swords is just more integrated. And so that intuitive side of the female principle can still be there along with logic. And that's like a very powerful one-two punch that's always helpful in life. And, you know, in that can mean many things for you personally. It can mean that um, if you're doing a, um, if you're doing your own work, you may have a lot of emotions, a lot of um, feelings of um, inferiority or just like you need to prove yourself. And this is like kind of putting that under wraps and, and being able to just do what you need to do, take care of business and still be able to envision, you know, have that creative force behind you as well. It's a very creative combo with the, with the um, intellect. And in your personal relationships, not allowing any relationship to get the best of you. And if you are in a, a relationship where you always feel attacked by the other person, that you can come up with a great exit strategy that's going to be epic. That's not going to be, you know, cause messy, um, you know, situation, which you can't stand. You don't like, um, you know, strong feelings, typically. And of course, I always get the the air sign that says, I am totally emotional, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, of course, you know, you might have cancer, um, moon or something like that, or Venus. And um, it, all of those things can happen. But overall, uh, the air signs tend to be a lot more comfortable in the realm of mind versus um, their emotions. And actually, I think they fear very well doing so. Uh, the only thing that can happen is if that you sublimate your emotions and don't even deal with them, it can make you quite kooky because that's where I see a lot of kookiness with the air signs, um, that they are not in touch with their emotions. And so they, and, and yet they go to therapy constantly. So kind of a, um, an interesting comment, you know, uh, paradox. Um, but they they love talking about their emotions. They don't necessarily feel them or understand them. Um, truly, um, they, I, until, I feel like until you, until you can embrace drama and not be afraid of it, um, I feel like you're going to, to be living life on the surface. It doesn't mean that you welcome drama, but if it comes into your reality that you're able to, um, withstand it in, in a way that doesn't. Uh, you know, because some people, they just, oh man, they will just run the opposite direction if anybody even raises their voice, you know, and they can't handle that strong emotions from other people. So I feel like you have to be able to do that to, in order to not be reactive and therefore to sublimate some of your own strong emotions that all human beings have, you know, from time to time. So anyway, very interesting. And, um, if you'd like a private reading, Gemini, please click on the link below. Um, thanks for watching and um, have a great rest of the month. Bye.